Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcome the 73rd Postmaster General of the United States of America, Pat Donahoe. Morning, everybody. Morning. Good morning, everybody. I hope I'm listening to poor Lewis here. I hope he hasn't been uh, talking too much. Look, looks like he's losing his voice. I am. He is. That's a, at any rate, um, well, thank you very much for the invitation. I certainly appreciate the opportunity to come out and talk with you guys. I, uh, sorry I'm late, too much running around. Um, what, what I'd like to do this morning is fill you in on a couple things, but I want to make sure I leave plenty of time for questions. I have a hard stop at 10 till, so Brian's going to give me the flag. What we'll do is I'll fill you in on some things that are going on till about 10.30, leave 20 minutes for questions, because I definitely uh, want to hear what's on your mind, any thoughts, any suggestions, and I'll do my best to fill you in on, on in answering those. Uh, let me first start off by saying thank you very much for the excellent job you guys continue to do. I, you know, it's, it, you are doing a tremendous job. Keep your heads up. There's a lot of stuff going on, and if it wasn't for uh, the supervisors and managers and the postmasters, uh, things would be a lot tougher. You're doing an excellent job leading this organization. You're doing an excellent job managing to, through all the change, and that is a hard, hard thing. And if you look around uh, at us, we're no different than anybody else in the United States, and for that matter, anybody else in the world as far as change goes. There's plenty of requirements out there, plenty of uh, uh, situations that are taxing to us, whether it's from a revenue and, and cost perspective, or this legislative issues that pop up, or just the general feeling that, that, that's going on inside this country. So again, thank you. You're doing a great job. Uh, I, I, I couldn't be any more proud than I am of working with this great team that we've got in the Postal Service. Um, there's plenty going on though. Uh, last year, if you think about it, we, we came out with the, uh, uh, the strategic plan and have worked very hard at implementing a number of the things in there. I think if you remember last year, March, about a year ago, we talked about some things that we would do from a standpoint of revenue generation, cost management service, and then things that we would ask others to do. Um, since I took over the responsibilities at PMG, it's been my feeling that there's, with the exception of legislation, everything else we are in control of. So I've been trying to focus the organization not only on the things we said we'd do last year, but get into some of the other things that I think we need to get into and continue to move because, uh, again, time is not on anyone's side at this point in time. We've got to work through as much as we can uh, cost and revenue uh, to get ourselves back on, on more firm footing. There's been four things I've been talking about publicly, and let me speak a little bit about that this morning again, and that's the whole focus on business consumer channel, increasing and improving and competing in the parcel business, uh, positive experience for customers, and leaner, faster, smarter. In terms of the uh, consumer to uh, or business to consumer channel, uh, a lot going on, and that is our major opportunity to grow this business. We have got to grow this business, and so a number of things happening there. Mainly, very simply, things like the forever stamp that gets that issue out of the way. Forever stamp for all stamps. We've got in the process of rolling out this um, every door direct, which is a simplified mailing to city routes. Um, if you haven't heard about it, you will be hearing about it in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we are asking people down through the organization to be familiar with it and rolling it out almost like we did with uh, Business Connect and Carrier Connect. But the nice thing about that is it is a very simple and easy way for people to get into the mail. You can go online, you can pick the, the streets, the routes that you want to include in, in your mailing, and, and, the, and our website will help you actually walk through it and you can put the mailing together. There's no permit fees any of that stuff that keeps customers away. So it gives small business an opportunity to jump in and test the mail. It gives large business the same opportunity, people who haven't used the mail. That's another focus we've got. The top 100 customers that are in, in this United States that spend ad money that don't spend that much money with the post service. I had an opportunity the other day to speak to the, uh, uh, the CEO of, of Macy's. And surprisingly, uh, Macy's 
only spends a portion of their ad money on mail. When you look at the mail that, that they bring into us, uh, you, you, you start to realize how much they spend in the newspaper, TV, and whatnot. So we've got a real focus going, too, on tr with, with the larger businesses, people who spend billions of dollars advertising uh, out there talking to them about getting in the mail because mail is still the absolute direct way to get in front of a customer's eyes. Better, more dependable than anything else. Better than the Internet, better than radio, better than TV. It is the best way to get in front of your customer's eyes and we really need to continue to move in that direction. One of the reasons we started with the um, every, every uh, door direct process was it comes right down to the carrier route. You don't have to sort it in the plants and it's probably from a standard mail uh, standpoint has the best payback of anything that we've got. So if we're gonna be spending a lot of time trying to generate revenue, we wanna generate revenue that has good contribution. So you'll be hearing a lot more about that and there are many other things on the horizon around uh, growing uh, the customer uh, or the business to consumer channel. One final thing there, we are, are in the process of, of rolling out a, a new uh, negotiated service agreement with Discover. Uh, it's really a good one because what it does, the first time it gives us a chance to bundle first class and standard prices with a floor so, you'll, so there's an, there is incentive for the Discover card company to grow the mail. We think that we can replicate that, and we also think we've got some pretty good opportunities coming up from a pricing standpoint uh, with other large mailers to bring the volumes into us and uh, work through uh, some pricing to A, uh, save us a little bit of money in terms of uh, discounts that we presently give through pre-sorters, and at the same time, look at uh, opportunities to save the, uh, the origin mailer a little bit of money and keep them in the mail. So there's a lot of stuff going on that way. Package business, um, if it fits, it ships. The, the priority mail campaign uh, continues to do well. We saw this year at, at the holiday season, you guys saw it out there when you were delivering mail, sorting mail in the plants, uh, about a 16, 17% increase in parcel select. I don't know if you've, you've seen recently, UPS has made some statements about moving more into that area. So it's a, it, it's a definite winner for us being a part of that value chain. We also think that we have opportunities working with companies in regional areas. So we are being, we are rolling out, it's at the uh, Regulatory Commission right now, a regional package offering that's pretty reasonably priced and it's got some flexibility in there from a time perspective so that you guys can manage that as it comes through the uh, through the NDCs, the idea would be drop at the NDC or drop at the uh, plant prepared at five digit. And, and with that, we're able to, uh, to generate revenues for ourselves while competing in that area where people are looking for free shipping because the price is good. So keep your ears open, a lot going on in that too. The other thing about packages, this year we will be rolling out more and more scanning tools. Uh, we're in the process of buying ring scanners. If you guys are running uh, plants, you will have a lot more ring scanners. We're trying to move away from some of the more complicated things we've got. And we've also got some new scanning systems and equipment upgrades. So the goal is for this, the end of this year, to have the best visibility across the board uh, in terms of, of uh, express priority and the reg rest of the package business. And then we'll get into even more next year as more of the uh, standard mailers start to put barcodes on their packages. The key thing there is to try to get to, to get that scan as you work because it's uh, not extra work, but as a, uh, the, the idea behind the ring scanner is, is that you know you're capturing that information as it goes through the system. So lots lots going on there, and we know that there's going to we'll add some value in that direction. Every experience, a positive experience. We've been talking that you you will start to see uh, a lot more come out on that, and that means every experience, and that means external and internal customers. Okay. I, you know, part of changing the way that we do business with external customers also is just as important inside. You know, treating people well through this organization, all the way from the top down through the supervisory ranks is very, very critical. You can't say to people, well, let's treat the customers nice if we don't treat each other nice. So you will see a lot of focus on that. You, it's important. It is very, it's very important. And some of the things as we work through, you know, I, I, I've been saying to Lewis and, and uh, Jay and Brian, I am wide open for suggestions that we make 
uh, some changes on how we do things that right now cause some friction and grief, and I'll talk about those in a couple seconds. But, but that part of the, the other side of the every experience positive is, is just saying that to people. We've never talked about that a whole lot internally. We'll talk about pleasing the customers or service uh, on time, but when a carrier delivers seven, 800 stops on his or her route, part of that customer experience is every piece of mail that's supposed to go in the box to the right box, and that makes for an excellent customer experience. We do that every day, and we continue with scanning the right way, answering the phone, you know, fielding customer uh, complaints and working them uh, through our system. We also have to help a lot with the systems issues, and that's um, one of the things I've asked Susan a chance to do, and you'll hear a lot more about that coming up in the next couple months. And finally, leaner, faster, smarter. I will say this to you guys. You, I don't care what anybody says, the Postal Service is, has, has demonstrated over the course of the last 10 years, more than anyone, how to efficiently run an organization. You have taken, you have double productivity, You've improved service substantially at the same time, not just measured service. You've improved service at the, at the counter, uh, service across the board, and you've done a tremendous job. Uh, and there's many companies, there's many companies who might have taken on some of those changes and some of the ability to cut costs out. If you think about it from a car company perspective, General Motors did it, but they get rid of Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Saab, Humvee, everything else. You're still processing mail seven days a week and deliver mail six days a week. So you should be very proud of yourselves. There's always opportunity for improvement, and we'll continue on that. But where we are now, we've got to start taking some different looks, and we are. You know, some of you guys are involved right now with AMPs. We've got to do some consolidation because we've lost we've lost 50% of the single piece volume in the last 10 years. So we can't sit still with the plant network the way it is. And and I appreciate all your help as we make those changes. Some of the other things we're going to do, um, we're in the process right now with the NALC again for another round of, uh, of, of JRAP, and I've asked them, I said, come to us with some suggestions around route optimization, and that's moving from office and street to strictly street type routes. And if you get to that, uh, and I think we will very shortly, uh, there's definitely opportunity for savings there. It makes sense. What's happening today, and you guys know, some of you guys run in the delivery unit, you're getting this much mail from the plant for casing and with flat sequencing, in some cases, just not having flats in the system as it is, there's not that much work for carriers to do in the office. So we've got to make some changes. We've been working with them, reaching out. They've worked well with us with, the, with a couple of these adjustment processes the last couple of years, but we need to continue in that direction. And then, of course, uh, what we're doing with, with post offices and the duo process and everything else, got to continue to do the consolidations there to take any and every cost out of the system because unfortunately, even if we even if we got legislation passed that resolved the prepayment of health benefits, if we don't have some other things going like internal uh, efficiencies and eventually six to five day, we'll still not get out from underneath the, the hole we find ourselves financially. So we have to do those things. Any good company does that and I think we're a great company. So thank you for what you've already done. There's plenty more coming. And again, I appreciate all of your help that way. Now, a couple other things. You saw the agreement with the APWU. Um, I'll, I'll touch on it real briefly. Take questions on that if you want. Um, bottom line is this. Um, we, we have a, an agreement with them that is in the ratification process. So there's not been a lot of discussion from a postal service standpoint. It's up to the unions to get that ratified. And what they put out, you know, that's 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 their business. Um, the Cliff Guffey, I think, d did a very responsible thing um, going forward in the clerk craft. You will have 20% uh, of the cl clerk craft will be non-career flexibles. And when I say flexible, flexible. No more restrictions around window. No restrictions around schemes. No restrictions around time of day. 10% in maintenance. 10% in motor vehicle. And uh, we also, for new employees coming in, will start at a 10% lower uh, pay rate that will stay that right way for their entire career. There's no